Hey, hey, oh, happy days. Isn't it a beautiful day? That's just raining, but I think rainy days are a beautiful day. Anyway, they're worth celebrating. So hello and welcome back to the working week, which I think is just beautiful. Like it's the perfect conversation to start with, with this conversation is that, you know, there's this whole like working week back to the real world. Um, and it's funny that when you're an entrepreneur or when you're someone who's passion driven, maybe you've got a day job and you're working your passions around that, like I do, or like maybe you've got a day job and you've got a hobby. Maybe you've got several jobs and one of them's maybe the more so job and one of them's maybe the not so job. Um, it's a totally relevant to each and every one of you, right? So quite often um, we sit ourselves here and we're, we're, we've got these expectations upon ourselves. And something that I had come to terms to was that I was always believing that every other person, um, <laughs> every other per every person has this belief that um, someone else is setting expectations upon you uh, that you need to live up to. Where when we sit and reflect a little bit, we realise that actually <laughs> it goes back to that saying, you know, what others think of you is none of your effing business, right? You know, because it's none of your business what someone else thinks. So believing that someone else has got the expectations upon you is actually BS. Like it's totally the expectations that you draw upon to believe are a uh, confinement, a structure, uh, a guideline for you to facilitate is you copping out really. It's really us kind of going, well, I'm working towards what they told me to do because then that way we don't really have to fully attach ourselves to the outcome. Uh, it gives us wriggle room to blame. Um, so not living up to their expectations is actually you not living up to your expectations. So then it comes down to that conversation of um, understanding whether or not you feel worthy. And this is the internal work that really comes about. Like uh, I'm reminded daily of the different generations and the different uh, living expectations that we have out there in the world at the moment. Uh, there's about three of them really. One of them is the the numb existence where it's go do my job, do what I know and anything outside of that is BS. It's all got to be, you know, that woo-woo, collywallow that is not relevant. You know, you've just got to go out there and work harder and do the stuff and just keep digging and just keep digging and just keep working because that's the only way you get by is by doing more of the stuff you've always done, right? This is the older generation. This is the generation that don't believe in the internal work and don't actually have any effing idea how to connect to themselves. Oh, totally contrast there. And then you've got the middle generation who are really all about like, oh my God, I must do the internal work. I understand now that everything I've created, we're coming into this like self... Um, self-realization period where we're this generation and we're in now that are in their 20s 30s and 40s well, some 40s are coming to this realization that it's it's actually my shit like my projection on the world is actually reflecting straight back at me oh and they're they're gearing up to owning themselves um and, and really coming into contribution with the world then we have the younger generation who are all about, oh, everything's happening to me and I should be allowed to do whatever I want. And they don't actually understand hard work because they believe it should be all given to them because my generation turned around and gave them everything. Gave them everything they needed while we were off doing our own thing and, and blaming the world, but then blaming ourselves and doing all the internal work. And there wasn't a balance. There's still not a balance. I believe the generation to come will be the balanced generation, you know, like... There'll be this mix where we've created these drone children that are so disconnected um, and then the expectations that come in around that too. So coming back on track, well, I hope you like that rant. That was not what I was planning. But anyway, um, it comes down to understanding whether or not you're worthy of recovery. So I did a, um, a picture last night of being in the beach. Hey, Katie. Um, I did a, a picture of being at the beach and, and speaking about the ebbs and flows in life and um, and something that's really come up recently with all the holidays that have been on is that whole, do I deserve to stop? Do I deserve to have a holiday? Um, because truth be told, for the last couple of years, every time we've had a holiday, my belief, and this is me just sharing from self-taught, self-knowledge, my belief was if I'm on holidays, I should be working on all the other things because who am I to stop? Because I've got the world to create. And, and so I lived in this anxious bubble where every spare moment I had was to create because if I wasn't creating and doing then I wasn't doing and I wasn't being and I wasn't showing up and I was being a cop out and how dare I stop and rest right so it comes down to am I worthy am I worthy of resting and recovering and <clears throat> the greatest glory is that 
it all comes in ebbs and flows, right? It's like really work hard, come back, rebalance, recalibrate. And it's this, 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 this perspective of reflection, you know, like doing all the work. Yeah, I'm satisfied. I'm, I'm achieving. I'm getting all this stuff done. And then it gets to the point where you're like, oh, tired, resisting temptations to crumble and fall. And then we pull back. And we get an opportunity to reflect <clears throat> and some of us choose to reflect and then be like, whoa, like I created these things. Hey, Rebecca, I created these things. I created this situation. Like for me, it was always, I kind of feel like I almost ruined like holidays away because I was like, no, every moment I must be creating this next thing and I must be creating the next thing. And when I reflect back on them now, those holidays were way more important and that time off was way more important, but I didn't believe that I was worthy of stopping resting and recovering and reflecting upon the things that are going on around me. I didn't believe that I was worthy or capable of stopping because if I stopped, I feared I'd never get started again. And I think that's been the recent reflection is that that fear of stopping, how do I find my momentum again? But then we go into this massive, like, have you noticed how when that happens, you're like, oh, stopping feels good. Oh, that feels good. Oh my God, that feels good. I don't know if I want to start again. Oh, that was fun while I was creating and I was in the momentum because right when momentum stops. But then we have this mass judgment upon ourselves of like, now to get started, I must be back at that space like this, this instant gratification of, well, I've rested now. Now give me my prize so I have all of the energy and all of the focus to go back and get straight into it. But it's this kind balance where we have to go, right, I know where I was, was productive, yet was it really serving me long term? Right? So it's almost like hit training for our uh, creative endeavors. So it's like I could go and smash myself all year round and reach burnout and end up in hospital and I'm good for no one and nothing. Or I could find a way to understand that every time I rest and recover, these little appreciations, these little calibrations happen so that when I get, hey beautiful, mwah, hello beautiful Louise, it's so good to see you on live. Um, when I get these rests and repairs, I get these beautiful calibrations where I suddenly realize, gee, I enjoy this creative space that I get to be in. But when I'm not in it, am I sitting here resenting that creative space or am I sitting there excited to rest, repair and get back into it? And that's the questions you've got to ask yourself, right? Because if you're sitting there going, oh, I don't really enjoy that creative space as much as I make myself believe, then you get to assess it and figure out your best path to move forward. But often we're in this instant gratification where we're like, no, I must be back at my best back then because that was perfect and that was that was achieving, that was this, that was this. And our expectations and obligations come into it. Like it is down to my genetic core. Like legitimately it is within my profile, in my genetic, genetic, profile, blah, 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 genetic profiling that I do, in my profile it legitimately says, I may chase an ideal um, calibration, an ideal stature in my creative uh, genius within my work life. And if I'm not achieving that, um, that level, then I will continue to seek out work that feels good to me, that aligns to me and that I feel is wholesome. So it's within my genetic ingrained predispositions to search for work that is meaningful to me, right? So then if we're out there doing all of this hustling, doing all of this grinding, and then we come to a holiday and it's like we're detoxing, into the holiday and detoxing out of the holiday. Like it's just this constant waste of energy, right? But most of the time it comes down to our expectations of what it's meant to look like rather than just being like, cool, I'm accepting that. And I've got my hair on this side. I'm accepting that Easter just come and Easter is now going to haunt me for the next week because I chose, I chose to do a few things that are rather naughty, uh, which is consumerism or I could, and I could go into judgment of that. Oh, I failed. I let myself down. Or we could sit there and go, you know what? I enjoyed that space and time. We had some beautiful family breaking down to breakthrough moments, as you do. And now we have greater relationships. And now when I look at the work-life balance that I desire, I realize that maybe I want a little bit more balance. Like life never just gets easy, done, simple, finished, mapped out, perfect. It's this constant like do, 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 recalibrate do, 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 recalibrate. So many of us feel that it is destructive to rest and repair because we're pent up in this anxious ball of expectations upon ourselves and how life should be showing up for us rather than recognizing that life gets to show up for us to interpret, to love, to nourish, 
to enjoy, to endeavor, like it never finishes. We're always going to be getting better and grander. So today's message is enjoy the ebbs and flows, enjoy the breakdowns to break through because they're ultimately where the magic is and you get to understand where you want more in life and what you're actually choosing more of rather than living at expe letting expectations and obligations rule the roost because they take they are the theft of all joy. They are the theft of your joy of the small moments, the gaps in between. They are the theft of all joy of the magic that we get to live out day in, day out. And just because something doesn't turn out 100% the way that we wish it would, doesn't mean that it's a failure. It means it's a recalibration. It means it's just a change in our sails by two degrees maybe, maybe 10, to go, hey, so I was doing all this in life and these were my expectations, but when I stop, and I hear my inner voice, maybe my inner child, maybe it's my frustrated adult, maybe it's my, my wounded adult. What are the things that really matter to me? And every single time, it's, it's, it's an opportunity to go within and understand what you're yearning more for now. Because it changes. Like so many people sit there and go, I know who I am today and I know who I am always and this is how I am and this is how I show up. But your environment and how you're reflecting upon your environment at that point in time will dictate whether or not that is true for you in that moment. And yeah, you might feel like you're bipolar at times. You might feel like you are erratic and, and uh, imbalanced, but your balance and perfection come from your messiness, right? Because they're constant recalibrations for your, your direction. There's constant changing of the, sail, the wind and the sails so that you can create the straight line. Like a ship doesn't sail straight. This is something I loved about being on the yacht a while ago was, Nothing goes straight, my love. It goes this way, change direction, this way, change direction, this way. And you're constantly recalibrating your sails to come back and eventually reach that destination somewhere out there, which the destination can totally change. But everyone has this belief that we have these quick fixes or we need these instant gratifications to get to where we're going. But that's cheating yourself out of the journey, out of the, the zigzag in the wind. It's cheating yourself out of the learnings and the lessons and the realizing the idealize, idealizations. Is that a word? Anyway, realizing what we're idealizing and realizing that sometimes that's true and sometimes that's not. And being okay with the fact that it changes because you change. Your interaction with your environment changes. It all shifts every single day. So the ebbs and the flows of life is reminding yourself that there is no finish line. There's no line to jump because it constantly shifts and moves. So understanding and loving the fact that you get to grow and understand yourself bit by bit each and every day and re-deliver your expectations on yourself because they won't go away either. As much as we sit there and like, release your expectations, your expectations are always going to be there, right? Because you're always viewing your outside world, checking in with your internal world and going, where is the difference? How do I bridge this gap? Because it's your innate journey, it's your core desire, it's your reason you're here, is to live out a life of experience, a life of learning, a life of creating, a life of breaking down to break through. It's a messy process. So embracing that without judgment is the greatest gift that you can have. So that's my reminder today. Break down to break through, go through the ebbs and the flows without judgment and expectations. Just try and detox of that. <laughs> Peace out, guys. Peace out. Thank you for joining. And if you are watching the replay, give me a hashtag replay.